Fashion Tech Alliance involves higher educational institutions, small, medium and big enterprises and the research center. This project has been co-founded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union and is aimed to facilitate knowledge exchange between partners and to design and pilot learning experiences to engage students in a Fashion Tech residency program embedding young talents in the company's innovation activities. A central objective of the project is to design multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary and intersectoral learning activities involving international students from five European universities. The contents of the lectures have been specifically created to match the needs of fashion tech learning. They have become open educational resources to allow future engagement between a European-wide fashion and textile HEI community and are available under Creative Commons Sharealike 4.0 with the aim of a wide and free distribution, access, use and reuse. Ready to learn more about fashion tech? Enjoy the lecture! The title of this lecture is Textile Industry and Supply Chain Management in Context of Industry 4.0. My name is Vijay Kumar and I'm from University of Boros. I'm working at the Department of Business Administration and Textile Management. The contents of this lecture would be Introduction to Industry 4.0, Textile Industry 4.0, Why do we need Industry 4.0, uh, the framework and the contributing technologies for Industry 4.0 and then we'll talk a little bit on what is supply chain 4.0 in context of industry 4.0 and then the challenges in supply chain 4.0 the summary of this lecture and then there are some suggestions for the further readings the first question or the first uh, to go to deep dive into this lecture or the content of this lecture it is important to understand what is the meaning of this word industry 4.0 in short, Industry 4.0 refers to the fourth industrial revolution. It aims at transforming, it aims at the digital transformation of manufacturing and production and the related industries to create value um, in the processes or on a wider scale throughout the supply chain. So, in this context, when we talk about Industry 4.0, it refers to the integration of the physical industrial assets like machines, uh, processes or other uh, assets with the digital technologies such as sensors, actuators to make a cyber physical system. So looking back to the three existing three industrial revolutions, we go back, we see in this picture on the right hand side, we see that the first industrial revolution we say is uh, in the late 19th century when the when the machines were coming to the picture which were um, so the first evolution was related with the mechanization of the processes and the second was related with this assembly lines uh, where those assembly lines were more electrically driven that is producing in mass and then when we talk about this third industrial revolution it is related with electronics and IT so these electronics and ITs were integrated into the machines and processes to make uh, processes more having more controls and um, yeah and in this context when we talk about industry 4.0 we go on one step ahead and we say that in this revolution we are looking for creating a cyber physical system where the the physical assets are connected with digital technology are are connected with this internet through the digital technologies and so these are creating more some sort of autonomous systems and if we talk about uh, this industry 4.0 we see that when it started with the first revolution the, ch the the speed of change was very very little so of course it was some sort of uh, breakthrough at that time but the change was uh, changes with the time were very slow. So for instance from 1784 till 1913 you see that the, the, the industry progressed 
But now if we see that this innovation that is happening throughout this industrial revolution, it is exponentially increasing over the last few decades. For instance, in the third industrial revolution when it started in 1969, we say that it was it aimed at automation. But then we had subsequent phases of internet then uh, we have this mobile computing and big data com came into picture and then as a result we had this fourth industrial revolution where we had this exponential change where we have this um, uh, we have this technology advancements we have this exponential innovation coming into the picture and now at this at this stage when we talk about industry 4.0 we talk about this new uh, phenomena which is coming in the picture where industries or the machines are not uh, uh, machines are not a separate system but they are more like communicating systems where machines can talk with each other they can communicate with each other that's why create that's how creating an autonomous environment where uh, which is uh, more controlled of course which is more controlled but at the same time which is more responsive towards the change And in this context, when we talk about textile industry 4.0, this is nothing but this is the industry 4.0 in context of uh, textile industry. So we can see here the same phenomena that we have seen from industrial revolution 1, 2, 3, 4. We are looking into the same phenomena here. So if we look into back into industry 3.0, um, where uh, sensors and uh, sensors were embedded into the machines to create more controlled systems that was the same picture here in in the in the textile industry also so if you see in this picture we see that in, uh, in the previous revolution we had these machines where uh, system where we had um, sensors and actuators integrated into this uh, into the, in the textile machine so for instance in this picture it is the knitting machine and then so th and then when we are talk, when we are upgrading this system to more like a cyber physical system where we are having additional technologies such as internet of things data and services um, come into the picture they are they are connected and then the machines are able to uh, not only control but communicate uh, communicate with, uh, with with the system that's where we we call it as a industry or textile industry 4.0 so but here if we see in a broader picture what we are looking into here so if we go back into the industrial revolution industrial revolution uh, 1.0 1 we see that it was more focused on mechanization so the processes were more mechanized and of course that resulted to a significant growth in the a, a significant improvement in the efficiency but if we look into the data points basically we are collecting very little data point because everything was more or less manuals except the, the machines were working um, through some mechanical processes but then it came to industry for uh, 2.0 and then 3.0 and you see that we are integrating uh, we are creating more advanced or sophisticated system where we uh, the, the volume of data is also increasing so for instance industry 3.0 when the sensors and actuators were installed in, into the machines of course we could uh, monitor those machines on in a real time we can see okay if all machines are working well or if some machines are if there is a fault uh, and so on but when we talk about increasing this uh, adopting uh, these machines to a new technologies like internet of things then we what we are looking into the picture we are looking into a different arena there that means that we we are not only talking about um, uh, sensors and actuators which are controlling the machines but we are also talking about a broader picture of uh, networking that means the machines are connected with each other they are able to communicate uh, and then they are ab also able to adapt according to the environment so in this case we are having more complex systems but of course we are also having this opportunity to collect more data and when we talk about this collection of more data then we need more sophisticated technologies or techniques to process that data in order to make use of it so this is one example of uh, textile production supply chain so here we see that this is the conventional supply chain if we see in the 
topmost layer that we have this supplier spinning mills textile production customers and final product but beyond this in in, in the topmost layer more or less it is like uh, transfer of the of the physical products but then we have different layers on each process so for instance in the spinning mill if we see we we have this operational level where uh, uh, within each industry different processes are being executed but then deep in that those machines are connected with uh, in, in in context of industry 4.0 these machines are connected with some system where uh, machines are having the capability to to communicate so they have the capability to capture the data for instance there are the different sensors and actuators installed in in them there are the different uh, uh, microprocessors installed in the machines that are able to reduce or increase the production speed based upon some signals that they receive similarly there these machines are able to communicate that information to two other machines or to other industries or to other uh, industry in, in, in the supply chain so different industries are able to communicate with each other and adapt to uh, to uh, adapt to the uh, to the inputs that they receive from the neighboring environment or from the neighboring industry and that's how that is becoming more like an integrated system and in this case we have this um, uh, we might have these different technologies that are there for instance, we might have this uh, RFID chips or we might have um, uh, machine learning algorithms which are processing this the, the, the data coming from different streams and then processing and making some, some useful uh, outcome out of it uh, and so on. But then the question is, why do we need Industry 4.0? Because if we see industry 3.0, we had quite good systems where, for instance, we had good weaving machines, which could, if, for instance, if we look into a, uh, into a spinning, if we go into a spinning mill, we could see that all machines are working well. If there is any breakage of yarn, machines are stopping automatically, and then we are getting a signal where operator can come and um, can uh, rectify that error or uh, anything that happened to the machines or sometimes machines could adapt uh, automatically but then the question is why do we need industry 4.0 the simple reason is because adapting to the new technologies creating new uh, venues for um, uh, creating new benefits so th these benefits ranges from increasing the productivity of the machines for instance in, in um, if we have this higher level of um, automation that is there there might uh, so previously in industry 3.0 okay we had the sensors and actuators are there if there is a yarn breakage in the in the spinning mill okay signal is there an operator goes there and um, make some corrective actions but when we talk about this industry 4.0 we are talking about creating this some uh, some autonomous machines that means that if there is any breakage it doesn't need to be attended by operator maybe that is uh, machines have the capability to self rectify those error and then go for uh, continue the production system so similarly if uh, you know those sort of things can be connected with the inventory management like okay if the inventory is going low this autonomous system is automatically placing the order in order to fulfill the inventory similarly if the inventory is too high it is automatically giving signal to the to the suppliers to reduce the reduce the, the the production system and so on so that is overall that is helping us to control uh, the whole system and somehow helping us to increase the productivity similarly we have this increasing the flexibility by adopting industry 4.0 of course, we are creating the machines which are having more uh, capacity to to understand to to react to the environment. So that is through, uh, there, there, for instance, there could be robots installed in. There could be some sophisticated algorithms which understand the data and and um, yeah uh, respond to those uh, situations. 
uh, and so on so in that case it helps us to increase the flexibility so it doesn't have to uh, you don't need to have an operator always staying there or you need you you don't always need human uh, intervention to to uh, control that sort of system so it helps us to increase the flexibility of the of the system similarly if there is everything is not not everything but yeah i mean if there is an increased level of automation an increased level of um, uh, increased uh, level of um, yeah automation and um, uh, monitoring then uh, that helps us to increase the, improve the quality of the system similarly we also increase the speed of the system that is yeah of course connected with the productivity but productivity is more on efficiency but then the speed is more on uh, yeah uh, so speed is more on developing the ideas for instance if you have more data points or if you have more information of the industrial system if you have more information on how the customers are reacting how the customers are buying of course you have more chances uh, or you have more visibility of the system that helps you to um, to improve the, the the innovation speed within the industry and that also helps us helps you to uh, have more opportunities so in short if we talk about this industry 4.0 what we are looking here is we are looking here is a higher level of automation where um, the systems can communicate with each other and we are uh, and yeah we are creating some more um, yeah more connected systems but looking into the other side what we are saying is if we, if you see it from the basic point of view what we are looking here is the transformation of this whole physical system or not transformation but the connection of this whole physical system with some digital technologies so in short we can say industry 4.0 refers to this digitization of this whole all processes and as long as we have this digitization we can feed into microcomputers or microprocessors microcontrollers and that helps us to create some autonomous um, uh, autonomous environment Just looking at the industry 4.0 from the digitization perspective so here we see that okay I mean if we have a physical world like here it is it is giving an example of uh, autonomous trucks or yeah or a similar system like that or maybe we might have some autonomous robots within uh, some spinning mill or some weaving mill or maybe some garment mill then we have this uh, one physical world that means that we have we, we have this uh, production floor where uh, machines are producing or manufacturing the garments or producing yarns and yeah and so on so so in this case we have this one physical world but then we have this digital world digital world means that we we, we have this high level of technologies that are connecting there that that are communicating with these physical things through some sensors so you if if you remember the sensors and the actuators were coming from industry 3.0 but then the purpose of industry 3.0 is to control to create a closed loop system that means these sensors and actuators are not really uh, connected with with the with the with the whole system or whole supply chain but th rather they are connected with the with the machines to create this closed loop system that means those sensors and actuator can give some signals to the machines to maybe to make some stop or uh, or or if there is any error or uh, some monitoring but they are not connected with this this bigger world but here in industry 4.0 we have this digital world that is there so these sensors and actuators of course uh, they are giving signal back to the machines or to the processes there but they are also giving the signals to 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 other services which are on a higher level so these services could be for instance creating some analytics about the system how the efficiency is going on uh, how the processes are working how the quality is there but also that, that could also give the signals to the to the to the other supply chain actors to to say okay if everything is going well i mean if they have to the 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 um, 
the other supply chain actors if they have to adapt to increase up the speed or decrease the speed based upon how the things are going with uh, uh, within this uh, with with the with one supply chain actors and so on and this digital transformation also creating some uh, some additional services for instance uh, value for digital servitization we have value for digital integration value for availability so we'll talk about this in uh, uh, some example of uh, how this um, what are these digital uh, di digital servitization that is created in next uh, few slides uh, but before going that if we see industry 4.0 through a digitization lens we see that it has some sort of a hierarchical structure so on the bottom most we have the sensors and actuators which are connected to the machines that is that is uh, those sensor actuators are some sort of interface between the physical and the digital world so below that we have these physical systems that means we have these machines and uh, uh, other physical assets and those are connected with the sensors and actuators and those sensors and actuators are connected with with a higher level of system okay and those higher level of system they are collecting the data they are processing the data and they are then there is next layer which is the connectivity that means those systems are connected through internet to through to other systems so those other system could be within some within the same industry they, they could be maybe within the same supply chain or maybe that could be anywhere around the world but they are connected with some other systems also and this and beyond that on the top of that we have this new services are that are originating out of this uh, connected systems and then we have this on the on the top of that uh, we have this different platforms uh, we, uh, which are offering different services different applications and so on or different ecosystems and sh sh so on that uh, uh, that are the result of this digitization through industry 4.0 now next we talk about the framework and the contributing technologies for industry 4.0 of course when we talk about um, if, if you um, make a search for industry 4.0 you'll come across through many technologies which are um, which are often used when we talk about industry 4.0 this includes cloud computing mobile devices IOT platforms we have other technologies such as for location detection including GPS uh, we have uh, advanced human interface machine interface that is uh, create for creating the cyber physical system we have for authentication um, 3d printing smart uh, sensors and so on and um, but if we talk about the framework for industry 4.0 we understand that it is driven by mainly three uh, mainly three uh, broader aspects of digitization so first one is digitization and integration of the vertical and horizontal value chains second one is digitization of the products and services service offerings and third one is uh, digital business models and customer access so when we talk about the first that is digitization of integration of vertical and horizontal value chain so here what we say is when we talk about this vertical integration that means that is the, the integration of all processes across the entire organization so here it includes uh, when we talk about digitization we, we say that all data is um, uh, has to be made online for instance uh, or all data is made online through through this uh, digitization and integration that means within an industry it could be from operation process process efficiency quality management and other which could be for instance uh, operation planning and so on so that everything is made uh, available in the real time and then we we have different technologies which are supporting uh, supporting this uh, uh, digitization and integration and the second thing is that is the horizontal integration so horizontal integration that means that not only within the company but beyond that company also so that means that um, horizontal integration stretches beyond the internal operations uh, from suppliers to the customer okay so and all key uh, supply chain actors 
and then it also includes technologies for from trace and track devices to the real-time integration planning and execution the second is uh, digitization of the product and services offering so digitization of product and services offering includes the expansion of existing existing products for example by adding smart sensors communication devices that can be used with the data analytic tool as well as creation of new digital digitized products which could focus on completely integrated solutions and then by integrating this new method of data collections and analysis companies are able to generate uh, data on uh, product use and refined products to meet the increasing need for end customers so that is the second driving uh, uh, factor for uh, industry 4.0 and then we talk about this third in uh, um, third factor of digitization which is digital business models and the customer access that means that um, that means that the uh, the leading industrial companies also expands their offering by providing disruptive uh, digital solutions such as complete data driven services and integrated platforms uh, disruptive uh, digital business models are often focused on generating additional digital revenues and optimizing customer interaction and access and digital service products and services frequently look into the service uh, look to serve the customers with complete solution in the digital ecosystem so these are the three uh, driving factor or for this industry 4. Point, when we talk about industry 4.0 uh, of course this these are driving factor from the digitization aspect and so to give an example of these three um, uh, the creation of uh, the integration of horizontal and vertical uh, 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 value chains and then uh, digitization of products and services and uh, digital uh, business models and customer access there is an example of um, yeah of uh, of a supply chain where you have this um, it seems it is like um, automotive supply chain we, we, we have this uh, different industries which are supplying different types of um, different spare parts to to one automobile uh, to automobile assembler or yeah and then we have this different uh, stores there and when we talk about this system where uh, where the different uh, where the the supply chain actors are not only integrated within the company but they are horizontally integrated and then we have this digitization of different processes and creation of these value services we see that on this layer on on this physical layer they are individual separated uh, individual located on different locations but then there there is another information layer so on the information layer they are connected with each other that means that uh, that means they are they are integrated with each other they can have the access to more information how the for instance how the customers are behaving or how the customers are liking the product or if there is any defect in the product or maybe if, if there is any defect in the process at certain supplier or certain buyer and so on so that sort of information they are able to access um, through this information layer and of course based upon that they can create maybe some additional services for instance if um, if some product is being sold on a, on a higher pace or if a product is found faulty at the customer level of course those information can be transmitted back to the individual supplier and then individual suppliers can make these corrective actions or maybe individual supplier can can um, uh, offer some additional services or some uh, and similarly the, the these individual suppliers can maybe uh, uh, if if they if they found that okay some of the the buyers are liking the product maybe they can offer some personalized products and so on so that provides you the the to the new new opportunities for for this innovation through through um, yeah what we call it is digital business models so so far we talk about industry 4.0 and textile industry 4.0 where we are talking about whole industry but then we also have another thing which is called as a supply chain 4.0 so again supply chain 4.0 we are we, we are again referring to the supply chain in, the, in context of industry 4.0 so here is a definition of um, 
supply chain uh, 4.0 the application of internet of things the use of advanced robotics and the application of advanced analytics of the big data and supply chain management that is place sensors in everything create network everywhere automate anything and analyze everything to significantly improve the performance and customer satisfaction so that is something that goes for the industry uh, supply chain 4.0 but now you see that here previously we have, we were talking about everything when we talk about industry 4.0 but here the focus is on supply chain management so the the per core purpose of supply chain management remains same but then we are adapting to the advanced technologies which are borrowed from industry 4.0 to create or the characteristics are borrowed from industry 4.0 to create more improved system so here is an example so this is uh, you know uh, in fact this example goes similar to what we have seen previously that means that we have these factories we have this warehouse and then we have some distributors uh, or retailers there and you see that on the on one one layer that is the physically this is a physical system but another one is we have this um, on, on the top layer we have this information system and then these two are connected with each other to create this cyber physical system so you see by creating this uh, if all systems are able to communicate with each other for instance factories are able to communicate with warehouse and uh, and warehouse are communicate able to communicate with this retailer store or yeah, other intermediaries then you have more visibility and then you can create some additional services for instance uh, you can have this uh, advance uh, or you you can have this personalized offer to the customers who are who are looking for specific products and then maybe you can have this uh, personal recommendation based upon how or, or the, the liking of a customer and that sort of information is taken is processed through this uh, information system or um, yeah on on this top layer and then you and then by getting in uh, the data from all places you can have this more uh, accurate forecasting you can have more um, you can have this more better segmentation of the customers and so on and then that also helps to innovate uh, the products that are more um, more liked by the customers or more required for uh, or more uh, more in demand and so on so when we talk about this industry 4.0 again the feature probably it will be very similar to uh, what we have discussed so in the features of supply chain is the use of real time data to synchronize supply and demand uh, implement a robust supplier alliance um, or partnership program and customize uh, the supply chain to specific business needs and remember when we talk about be it industry 4.0 or be it supply chain 4.0 but everything is more on connected environment that means in industry 3.0 the, the the machines were having the sensors but they were alone they could you know control machines could control themselves but then the purpose was not to go beyond that but here in supply chain 4.0 we are talking about uh, a bigger picture that means machines are not alone but machines are also speaking with each other the companies are speaking with each other in more like in an autonomous way and that is how a, a new ecosystem is created so looking into the 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 traditional supply chain if you see traditional supply chain if you if you if, if you see how what what was the setup of traditional supply chain we had this uh, let us take an example of sim simple supplier we have this production we have this distribution and then we have this final customers in the traditional supply chain when everything they are you know connected in a linear fashion of course there, there might be more uh, suppliers and buyers it, it doesn't have to be only one but for an example we take this on one supplier production distribution and uh, customers and you see that how this demand flows back in the supply chain so for instance we, we have this customers who are um, who wants to buy something and then distributor uh, reads those demand and then places the order in the production and then those orders are are uh, are flowing backward and similarly when these are flowing backward of course you you all industries are making plans separately to, to 
when they get this order or when they yeah when when they have some indication from the from the buyers and so on so in this case the traditional one is more like plan and control that means that you make some plans that means that for instance a distributor makes some plans based by reading how the market trends are there and then based upon that places some orders and yeah when you get the order then you try to sell it right so here the the, the whole phenomena is like plan and control but when we talk about this industry 4.0 the industries are not connected in a linear fashion okay so in fact because they are there is there is one physical system where uh, supply chain actors are connected with uh, you know they are uh, having transaction of uh, goods but at the same time they are connected to the through this information layer that means if we go back to this slide that means this this is the physical connection between the suppliers and buyers but then we have also have this information layer up so this information layer is not necessarily connected in in a linear fashion that means that it is it this information layer may not be like this it could be something like they are connected in a star network that means there is some supply chain control tower that means that th that is a bigger system which is taking input from all or which is monitoring the data from all all supply chain actors and then that is giving the signal back to or that is uh, uh, creating more visibility to all supply chain actors so in that case it is not necessarily like here distributor can read the customers and if a supplier has no in the traditional supply chain supplier has no connection with the with the customer so it is difficult to predict the predict the demand from the customer um, for, for a supplier but in this case since all the supply chain actors in in context of supply chain 4.0 all supply chain actors are connected through an information layer so basically it is this customer information can easily be read by uh, all supply chain actors so that helps to um, yeah so that will that, that creates more visibility and what we say it we say it you know instead of having this plan and control this is more like plan do check and act that means that we have this more av um, availability of the data we have more um, uh, integration with the other supply chain actors that helps you to to broaden your scope so in this way you are not necessarily uh, relying only on the next supply chain actors instead you have more visibility so uh, those physical barriers are uh, are not necessarily acting as uh, information barrier for you and then if we compare this traditional supply chain and uh, supply chain 4.0 of course first one we already talk and then we have this uh, second point here which is yeah multiple disjoint planning cycles so if you see here in this diagram we see that this since these supply chain actors are uh, you know they are acting as like a buyer and supplier to each other so each of them is reading the demand to the next supply chain actor for instance distributor is reading how the customer want uh, this production actor at the production stage is reading how the distributor wants uh, the supplier on this stage is reading how the the production uh, company wants and so on so each of them is having this planning cycle which are disconnected with each other or only connected with uh, subsequent actor not necessarily connected all are not connected uh, with one cycle but when we talk about this supply chain 4.0 so you see that all supply chain actors are connected with each other on through one information layer so that means that the, it is not they, they don't have to rely only on uh, they don't have to make this disjoint planning cycle instead they can have this interlink planning cycles uh, but when we talk about traditional supply chain the overall feedback uh, they don't have really an overall feedback loop for instance how the, the customers cannot have direct feedback to the supplier it has to have through the intermediate suppliers so uh, or intermediate supply chain actors which creates you know uh, an ineffective feedback loop because uh, yeah n uh, one is not getting direct feedback from other it has to have it has to go through the other uh, 
uh, supply chain actors but if we talk about industry 4.0 of course here we are talk we are connected through an information layer so different supply chain actors have diff you know access to the to the information there so in that case uh, this overall feedback loop is very stronger very strong and then in traditional supply chain we don't have this uh, we have this partial view of the supply chain because this is how the because th this is how the supply chain actors communicate with each other but when we talk about industry 4.0 since everyone is connected to that information layer so you have this more broader view or we call it as like 360 degree view of the supply chain we have this uh, in traditional supply chain communications in silos that means that this supplier in is uh, speaking with the production company production company is speaking with the distributor and distributor is spe speaking with the customer but um, there is not uh, you know they, they are they are communicating in silos but if we talk about industry 4.0 everyone is connected to this information channel so everyone so uh, you you have this the communication is not necessarily in the silos now and similarly there are many additional points in traditional supply chain you have lack of collaboration while in uh, supply chain 4.0 of course that is the purpose is to create this collaboration that is the the main key of success to industry for, uh, supply chain 4.0 and similarly you have this other issues that are connected with each other uh, with the traditional supply chain for instance you have this imbalance in supply versus actual demand because you see in the in the in the picture top the suppliers are not necessarily reading directly to the customer so uh, there might be any issues of uh, imbalancing the supply and demand but in supply chain 4.0 the communication is uh, more fair and more transparent so that helps to to reduce this um, uh, to to minimize this uh, variation between uh, supply and demand and so on and similarly you have this uh, other issues such as uh, uh, on-time delivery so there are because the, the the communication is not that clear in the traditional supply chain so you have issues all of sometime issues with this um, um, uh, the delivery on time and so on but these these issues are because you have more integrated supply chain when we talk about industry 4.0 so those aspects are uh, better controlled there but when we talk about this we also have certain challenges there it is not only that you know when if if we have so many opportunities with the um, supply chain 4.0 then why don't we simply opt it the simple answer is because there are many different challenges although it is like we have seen previously that we are creating more integrated system now so we are creating more integrated system that means that we are incorporating more technologies uh, and we are uh, asking the industries to collaborate with each other and so on so that is creating the benefit but it is also creating the challenges so for instance we can see the technical challenges when we talk about the supply chain 4.0 we need high degree of computerization and computing requirement and strategy as you see that if all machines are having sensors which are streaming the data all the time then we need better computer or we need stronger computer to hold that data if we don't have that then the purpose of uh, supply chain 4.0 is not solved and if we have that you can imagine like if you if, if we have this high power computing machine that is required there of course then we need to invest on that but we'll see those challenges in the financial uh, issues compatibility of the systems now we are talking about collaboration between the different supply chain actors to create this sort of system so we have also to make sure that they all are speaking with each the same language i mean they all have the systems which are compatible with the, each other they all uh, you know they are you all are using the similar technologies which can communicate with each other if that is not there then the then again we are ending up with the with the previous uh, industry 3.0 that means that everything is okay on one supply chain actor but then they are not able to communicate with each other 
so compatibility has to be there technologically and other um, issue uh, other from the other aspects complexity of the system now we are talking about more complex system more sensors more actuators more sophisticated technologies more integration and so on and of course it leads to more complications there so of course we are having this benefits but we are also creating more complex systems there uh, and then we also have this uh, additional challenge for instance challenges in storing discovery and sharing data and data sharing is not so easy i mean uh, for from the practical aspects companies would not like to share the data like okay we have this much inventory these are our suppliers and buyers because do these aspects are also acting as a uh, acting as um, uh, because if they reveal this sort of information that could be used by maybe their competitors and if the competitors use that information then it uh, yeah of course no one wants to give the give the edge to the competitors there so how to impress all companies to share data and how to make sure that the data is safe and not not really going uh, you know or not really used by their competitors and so on so that has to be made sure and that has to be made clear to the companies and of course i mean few companies accept it but few don't and and like i said previously it, it supply chain 4.0 is all about collaboration and if there is no if some of if in a supply chain only few companies are collaborating and rest are not then the purpose is not solved uh, yeah and the scalability and uh, security and uh, pri privacy of the data yeah then we have this um, technological challenges so in the technological challenges the thing is that uh, even though we have these machines and processes but we need uh, skilled workforce to handle those things i mean we have to understand that for instance if we talk about textile supply chain we know that this uh, many processes are handled by semi-skilled labor would they be able to handle or would they be able to uh, manage those machines if the machines are becoming so sophisticated we have also to make sure that and similarly um, if there is insufficient knowledge then how to do that and similar and third thing is immature technologies all those technologies which are not all but many of the technologies that we rely in uh, industry 4.0 or in supply chain 4.0 are you know some sort of emerging one so some of them are already mature but some of them are not so in that case we don't really we have a uh, scope we know that technologies are there but still uh, there is a way to uh, there, there is still uh, we have to make sure that we we have the sufficient technologies to implement those things and then we have this financial uh, environmental and legal challenges so the financial investment of course this is one of the important thing that we are creating complex systems we need better technology we need uh, better um, uh, you know, or, or more um, skilled workforce to handle those things but do we have it or if we don't have it then then we have to get that and then how to do everything so this this is one of the challenge that is there when we talk about supply chain 4.0 and remember these challenges are even more relevant to textile industry because you you, you know that uh, the the profit is uh, not high i mean this is um uh, if, if you go to the spinning or weaving or to the in initial process in the supply chain you know that first the workforce is not that um, skilled and second the margin is very limited and if those suppliers are burdened to to apply these sophisticated technologies then it might even you know it may not be even feasible to 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 implement those so uh, so yeah so th this is another challenge there then we have the standardization standardization and uh, legislative policies so standardization means different uh, different um, countries are following different standards and if the standards are not same that might be an issues in the implementation as well as that might be an issue when with the legislative policies for instance in some countries there might be policies for uh, different level of secure uh, different level of uh, 
requirement for privacy of the data while it could be different in another country and then if we have this um, different level of uh, uh, different level of uh, 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 this uh, legislative policies or the policies that tells you the different level of uh, technological implementation then we might end up you know in another mess there and then we have this socio-cultural challenges that means okay if if the companies are doing good with uh, supply chain 3.0 or if they are yeah they are happy with that then there is again a challenge of adapting uh, adapting to the new business models strategic alignment between the functions companies and governance supply chain uh, participants corporations lack of ability to combine data obtain quality data fear of change so these all are the social cultural aspects that has to be seen when we talk about this new phenomena or not new phenomena but uh, new emerging uh, uh, supply chain management yes so these are the challenges that has to be uh, these are the challenges when we see that we need to overcome in order to implement uh, implement it so to summarize this lecture we talk about many things we talk about industry 4.0 and we understand that industry 4.0 is nothing but it is the fourth revolution and the, the purpose of that revolution is the industrial digital uh, digital transformation and to create these cyber physical systems and in this context we have you know uh, industry 4.0 is used in different contexts for instance it is used in supply chain 4.0 it is also used as a textile industry 4.0 which is when we talk about textile industry and so on so supply chain 4.0 is a part of industry 4.0 that refers to the digitization of the supply chain okay so again creating a cyber physical system of the supply chain of course uh, so here we have this physical system and then we have this digitization which is coming in the picture but the major question that we understand is even though it brings a lot of opportunities and a lot of benefits when we have this industry 4.0 but it also creates the complexity and when we talk about the complexity then we see that it creates some practical challenges from technology and organizational aspects that need to be addressed and of course we have this social cultural and other financial aspects that need to be addressed in order to harness the benefits so this was uh, a small introduction to industry 4.0 from textile industry and uh, supply chain management perspective uh, before going uh, th this is the further reading that uh, you can refer to in if um, uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about industry 4.0 and to understand how uh, in context of textile industry um, 4.0